As Guyana rapidly evolves into a green state, it is becoming more important than ever for communities, primarily those in the hinterland region, to fully unravel their complex environments. Historically, traditional methods of visualizing, representing, and understanding our environment have served us well. However, the development of geographic information systems, such as three-dimensional mapping, can alter the way people view, manage, and exploit their natural resources. Beyond Georgetown, there are many indigenous villages whose land contains valuable resources that contribute to the livelihood and economic well-being of not only the communities they occupy, but also Guyana as a whole. More importantly, the application of 3D maps is an opportunity to enable public participation in environmental and public policy decision-making. Nice to see you all again. Um, I'm here, as Martin says, your vice to show with the team, as I promised when we met last month. And we discussed this proposal from Iwakrama to make the first three-dimensional map of a community in Guyana. We made that proposal to you, and you agreed. And the other part of it is that we said, we're going to bring the material and work with you as you make the map. The discussion was that we would like to ensure that this is um, a map that is made by the people of Fairview. So the women, the children, the farmers, the men, the members of the village council, and everybody. So everybody is part of this map. And so first of all, I'd like to thank you for being here this morning um, and to uh, reiterate the point that we are happy um, to be part of this process in helping Fairview to be the first community in Guyana to have a three-dimensional map. So I'm really happy that we are here um, to work on it together. Andre. But well, now it is fitting. <laughs> it is that easy to call. <laughs> The collective process of 3D mapping gives rise to a progressive, creative synergy that empowers communities. It enables them to share and express in lasting visual form the rich detail of their environment, providing them with a tool for analysis, decision-making, advocacy, and action. The plywood and wooden frame acting as the base of the map were both secured through the technical capacity of the community. After the frame is set, 
Everyone will gather to start measuring the dimensions of the base that will be utilized. This will be determined primarily by Fairview villagers. Iwakrama's collaborative efforts continue to shape the way many view conservation and rainforest management. They have teamed up with Tropenboss International Suriname, a fellow research group within the neighboring country. As part of the lead initiative, researcher Lisa Bess is representing Tropenboss. Working along the Iwakrama team, she is equipped with prior experience in participatory three-dimensional mapping with similar villages within Suriname. My name is Lisa Best. I work as a researcher at Tropobos International Suriname. And we've done uh, participatory mapping with communities using the participatory three-dimensional modeling approach. And in this project, I'm here to support the mapping exercise with the Fairview community. The model itself is not the end. It's actually just the beginning. So. Um, once you have the model, it's important to be able to use it as well. And besides um, obtaining the final, the, the, the final model, it's also about the process of getting there. So during the process, you have a lot of exchange of knowledge um, because you have people that have specific knowledge on certain areas or on certain aspects of daily life in the community. So you have this cross-pollination of, of knowledge between community members, um, also between youth and elderly people, because the youth is also involved in the process. So I would say that the process is just as important as the output. The maps are then pinned together with carbon paper, which everyone will use to trace outlines of different areas onto cardboard. The cardboard will then be cut and used to form the base elevation of the mapped area. After all the elevated areas are measured and properly set, the village will have to bind it all together. The holding process will be done using lots of glue and paper. Once the paper and glue are applied, it will be given time to dry before proceeding to the next step. This part of the three-dimensional mapping process is very important because it includes lots of arts and craft that engages the younger Fairview members. It has the potential to ignite their interest and involvement in their natural environment. Once the paper and glue begins to dry, the village members will use their brushes to create well-defined elevation and contour lines that can be easily recognized. This will be the final process before the actual planning of the map begins. Okay, so what we're doing is that we have the base map already showing the different contours covering the entire Fairview village area and the community, the entire, the entire Fairview title band. And we're now um, covering it, priming it for depicting the different areas on the entire map. We're putting a white primer paint onto which we will add different colors depicting where is the forested area, where is the preserve, the protected area, where they have the airstrip and other attributes of the Fairview uh, titled land. As part of the process, the villagers must come together and create a legend for their map. The legend will show map readers what the different colors and objects on the map will represent. Fairview villagers must use their combined experience within the village to choose colors and objects that strongly identify with the community. In an effort to easily facilitate this process, Iwakrama has supplied both paint and the necessary materials that will be used to depict Fairview. The community persons here working on the map will show us where their homes are and the other important features of the village area. So they show us where the schools are, where the health um, posts are, where the doctor's um, house is and so on. The other things that they like us to know. All of these attributes on the entire Fairview um, title land are going to be depicted.
On behalf of the Wakrama International Center, um, I'd like on behalf of my team uh, to present to you and the community this map of the entire Fairview titled area, showing the different um, resource mapping exercises that you have been doing um, and to demonstrate it for the other members of your community and anyone who visits. Each and every one of you, all the elders, all the children, every member of the village council, thank you very much. This map here is for Fairview to use as a, as a tool for negotiation, as a tool for decision making, as a tool for management, as a tool for every aspect of your operations as you manage this entire area. I hope, like me, you, are, you feel excited that after these three days, it has been a very intense process, but now we have a completed map. Thank you very much. I never heard about a 3D map before, and um, I think it's very important for the community and myself as a leader, because it's kind of paint me out very clearly where our logging area are and where our sustainable Fairview um, logging area are too. So we, ca we cannot get confused in later on, and it's also going to help the kids um, knowing their community and their title land that they are responsible for. If I am to recommend 3D map to other community, I will tell them that um, it, it's important because you are the ones know the place and you will be doing it. Doing it. So it's not like somebody doing a print somewhere and come and bring it and it's wrong. It's you yourself identifying the spots where the house are, where everything else. And one of my advice to young leaders is that being a part of every thing that happening in the community, a part of sports, a part of map making, a part of every meeting, it's very important because being a part is more you get exposed and it makes you a more better leader because you would have a lot of experience.